Hi there, welcome back. There is a comment asking how to create a retro style flip clock in Fusion. I found it interesting and spent some time on that. Today I will show you how to create this flip clock and counter template using Fusion tools in DaVinci Resolve. In the media pool, right click and choose new Fusion composition. Name it flip number, set the duration to one second. Double click the Fusion composition or right click to open in Fusion page. Drag a background and a text node from the toolbar to the node editor. Merge the text node's output with the background node and connect the merge output to media out node. Select text node, go to the inspector. Enter 01 as the text, change the size to 0.5. Select the background node, click the rectangle button in the toolbar to add it to the background node as the effect mask. In the inspector, Change the width to 0.4, height to 0.7. I think this is good for the number display. Select the merge node, press shift space to bring up the tool selection window. Search and add a DVE node after the merge node. Go to the inspector, change the rotation X value, and we can see that the number is spinning along the X axis but we want to flip only the top half of the number for the effect. To achieve that, we click the rectangle button in the toolbar to add a mask to the DVE node. Set the mask center Y to 0.75 and change the width to one, which will limit the DVE effect on the top part only. Select the DVE node, changing the rotation X in the inspector and only the top is now moving. Move the playhead to frame 5, mark a keyframe for parameter rotation X, set the value to 0. Move to frame 11, change the rotation X to 90. Now we have a flipping down animation for the first number. To be more realistic, I want to reduce the brightness as the number is folded down. Select the merge node. Click the Brightness Contrast button to insert it between the Merge and DVE node. Go to Frame 5, click the Keyframe button to add a keyframe for the Gain parameter. Keep the default value 1. Move to Frame 11, where the top half of the number is folded down and invisible, set the Gain value to 0.25. But this is affecting the whole number, including the bottom part. To apply the effect only on the top half, we can reuse the mask of the DVE node. Connect the rectangle to's output to the brightness node, immediately the lower half of the number is turned back to normal. Now the number is getting darker as it's flipping down. Next, we will add another number to the composition so that when the first number flips down, it will reveal the next number behind. Select the four nodes used for the first number. Press Ctrl G to create a group for them. Press F2 to rename it as first number. Press Ctrl C to make a copy of the first number group. Click an empty spot in the node editor and press Ctrl Shift V to paste an instance of the first number. Press F2 and rename to second number. We want to keep both numbers with the same look and feel. Double click to open the second group, click to select the text instance node. In the inspector, right click the text input and select D instance so that we can change the value of the second number. Change the text to 0 2. Disconnect the DV node from the media out node and merge to the second number. Connect the new merge node to the media out. Now as we flip down the first number, the top part of the second number starts showing. We will need to flip out the lower half of the second number to complete the full flipping transition from number 1 to number 2. Similarly, add another brightness, DVE and rectangle nodes to the editor. Branch out the second number output and connect to the input of the brightness node. Select the DVE2 node. Press 1 to bring it into the left side viewer. 
Select the rectangle 3 node, change the width to 1, set center Y to 0.25, which limits effect to the bottom half of the second number. Select the DVE2 node, go to frame 11, where the first number flipping stops. Mark a keyframe of rotation X parameter, set the value to minus 90. Move the playhead to frame 25, set the value to 0, and a new keyframe is added automatically at the current position. Also add keyframes for the second brightness node, at frame 11, set the gain value to 0 0.25. At frame 25, set the gain back to 1. Connect rectangle 3 to the brightness node to mask the effect on the lower part of the number. Play the clip. On the left side viewer, we can see that number 2 is flipping down and reveal the lower half of the number. Drag the DVE2 output to the merge to's output. A new merge node is inserted and connected to the media out node. Play the clip. The top half of the second number is now blocking the first one. So we connect rectangle 3 to the merge 3 node to mask out the top part. Alright, we now have a flipping animation that transitions from the first number to the second number. Open the spline editor, select both DVE nodes and enable the curve display in the spline window. Click zoom to fit button to fit all keyframes in the window. Press Ctrl A to select all points, and press S to smooth the curves. Select the two keyframes at frame 11, press Shift L to make them linear. Click to add a keyframe at frame 17, set value to 0. At frame 21, add another keyframe, set value to minus 30. Now we have a nice flipping down animation with bouncing effects. There is one more thing I want to add to this retro style effect, which is a transparent line in the middle. Select Merge 3 node, click the Mat Control button in the toolbar to insert a Mat Control node after Merge 3. Add a rectangle mask to the mat control's gray garbage mat input. Change the width to 1 and height to 0.01. So far we did this transition just for one number flipping, but how about a clock display with hours, minutes and seconds? We can probably do that in this fusion composition, but that will be very tedious and time consuming. Instead we will save this as a generator template, and use it in the edit page to create a retro style flip clock. Select the mat control, right click and choose edit controls. Enter flip number as the name. Select slider control as the input control. Set the range from 0 to 59. Check the integer option. Click OK to confirm. Right click again to add another user control, enter the name countdown, Select checkbox control as input and OK to confirm. Now if we go to the inspector, open the user tab, we can see two user controls are added there. The countdown option will be used to create a countdown timer, we will demo the use of that after. Now, let's change the flip number to 59. Double click the first number group, select the text node. Go to the inspector, right click the text input field, and select Expression to enable the simple expression input. Go to the Node Editor, Control click to select the Mat Control node, so that we have both nodes available in the inspector. Click and drag a whip from the Add button to Mat Control, wait until it opens. Keep dragging to the Flip Number field. Release the mouse button, and we are back to the Text Expression field. Modify the expression to always display two digits with leading zero if the number is less than 10. Now the text is showing the number 59 we entered in the new flip number field. Make a copy of the expression for use later. Double click the second number group, select the instance text node. Go to the inspector, right click the text field and enable the simple expression input. Paste the simple expression we copied earlier. 
Control click to select the mat control node. In the inspector, move the cursor to the end of the expression. Click and drag a whip from the add button to the mat control and continue dragging to the countdown field. Back to the expression field, modify the expression so that if countdown is checked, it returns the previous number, otherwise it goes to the next one. To ensure the numbers fall between 0 and 59, we use the mod division of 60 to get the remainder. Select the mat control and go to the inspector. Change the flip number to 59, uncheck countdown, the result number is 0. If we change the number to 0 and enable the countdown option, it goes back to 59. One more thing we want to do is to enable the motion blur for the DVE nodes so that the flipping looks a bit more realistic. Select DVE1, go to the settings tab in the inspector. Check the motion blur option, set quality to 10. Repeat the motion blur settings for the DVE2 node. Now we have all the settings ready for a macro template. Select all the nodes except the media out node. Right click and choose macro, create macro. In the macro editor, enter the essential flip number as the name. Check to export the text font, color, size and the anchor parameters from text one node, so we can change the number style in the edit page. Select all color parameters of background one node, which will allow us to change the background. Rename the color type to background type. From the mat control node, export the user controls, flip number and countdown option. Select save as group from the file menu. Save it to the folder, fusion, templates, edit, generators. Close the macro editor and go back to the edit page. Go to the effects library, drag the essential flip number from the generators folder to the timeline. The default duration is set to 5 seconds. Change to 1 second. In the inspector, we can change the font style. Or set background to gradient. For a 10 seconds countdown, we can set the flip number to 10 and enable the countdown option. Hold Alt key and drag the clip to duplicate 10 more clips in the timeline. Change the flip number of each clip accordingly. Now we have a countdown timer. To make a clock display, uncheck the countdown options. Set the flip number of the first clip to 59. Change the numbers of the following clips to 0, 1, 2, and so on. Make sure to uncheck the countdown options for all the clips. If we want to show the clock more than 10 seconds, we can add more clips to the timeline as needed. Alt drag the first clip to add two copies to the tracks above. Rename the top one to hour. The second one to minute. Select the clips at the bottom and create a compound clip, name it second, which will be the second display. In the inspector, change the zoom to 0.75. Move its position right to give room for the minute and hour displays. Also resize the hour and minute clip to 0.75. Arrange the position of these three clips so that they are aligned and fit into the screen. Change the hour number to 9. Nudge the minute and hour clips two frames to the right, so the numbers flip sequentially. Extend the hour and minute clip to the left, and align with the second display clip. We now have a flip style clock created in the timeline using the flip number generator template. Alright, that's all for today. 
Thanks for watching and see you next time.